All right, this is video five of the immune system lecture sequence. Uh, and here we're moving on to cell-mediated immunity. So if you remember, the adaptive immune system or the adaptive portion of your immune system has two sub-categories, uh, humoral immunity, which involved B cells and antibodies, and now cell-mediated immunity, which involves a bunch of T cells and direct attacks or indirect attacks on your own defective cells. Now, <clears throat> within the T cell community, <laughs> there are cells that have one type of protein on their surface or another type of protein on their surface. And they call these CD4 or CD8. So CD4 stands for cluster of differentiation four, which is the particular type. I'm never gonna use that term. I'll just call them CD4 or CD8. CD4s usually become helper T cells, and some become what are called regulatory T cells, which we'll talk about later. CD8 becomes cytotoxic, and you can read see from that name, cytotoxic means that these guys are the ones that do the killing, right? These are the ones that kill your cells that need to be removed. Now we come back to our old class one and class two MHCs. Class one, these are the ones that are found on almost all your cells. If one of your cells, let's say you have a liver cell, let's say you get a liver virus. If a liver cell with a virus inside of it shows, wants to show off that it's infected, it grabs a little piece of that virus from inside and shows it and exposes it on uh, via these class one MHCs. Now this is endogenous. These this viruses or sorry, antigens that you find inside of your cell are endogenous, so they're cells that are, are infected. If that liver cell were healthy, he would stick out his class one MHC and a T cell would come by and go, ah, you're good. If it's infected, you stick out that class one MHC and helper T cells and cytotoxic T cells are gonna go, okay, that guy's, that cell is sick, we gotta get geared up to kill off some cancer or kill off some viruses. You also make memory cells to this as a side effect, memory T cells to, to deal with it later. Now class two MHCs are the ones that are found only on antigen presenting cells. And they're the ones that are gonna present what you call exogenous antigens. So what they do is they go scarf up, they phagocytize a bacterium or a viral particle or whatever, and they disassemble it and then expose that uh, antigen or that antigenic determinant on their their major histocompatibility compatibility complex proteins, class two. I know it's a lot of stuff, right? But let's just try and be simple here. If one of your cells ha is healthy, it's showing this off, class one MHCs, and your T cells are like, ah, you're good. If one of your cells is infected, it's showing off the endogenous inside antigen, and they're gonna show it to the outside on their class one MHC, and now your T cells that come by are gonna go, that guy's sick, let's kill him and all of his other sick friends. So that's every normal cell in your body. If you are a B cell or a macrophage or a uh, um, dendritic cell and you scarf up a bacterium, you scarf up some other foreign object, you're going to disassemble it, show it, class one MHC, then everybody gets geared on, right? So, so the, the helper T cells are gonna be like, okay, let's uh, fight this off. The next, and again, memory cells, the next screen right here kind of shows you that one of those uh, processes here on the right. So here is a dendritic cell which has eaten a bacterium, right? So it scarfs it up, right? Then it shows it off on its class two MHC to a helper T cell, which goes, oh, so you're holding on, you got this little red thing here, which means that this is a red thing that you're showing me because you just ate a bacterium. And you're showing me this piece right here, which is the anti antigenic, antigenic determinant. So I'm going to say, okay, my job is to make massive copies of myself, loads of helper T cells, which are going to do their jobs, which I'll show in the next screencast, and memory cells to stick around. You can summarize all that right here. Bind to the antigen, right there. Uh, co-stimulation, I didn't talk about that, but co-stimulation is basically... Um, other molecules are released from the virus infected cells. So when you bind to the antigen, 
and you get stimulated by damage by distress molecules, you're going to get geared up to do the next thing, which is proliferation, multiplication, and differentiation, which is becoming more than one thing, right? So you can become helper or memory. Now, the last thing you do, which I've really truncated here, is you're going to produce a bunch of molecules called cytokines. And there's a big table in your book, which I'm going to tell you to not study because it's too many technical details. I'm not going to have you learn it. Uh, just suffice it to say that cytokines, which include interferons and interleukins, which I did mention. Uh, wait, I did, I did do that. So they have tons of functions, and simply put, here they are. Now, you can be specific, but I'm not going to be. So if you can learn cytokines are produced by your immune system, and they do a lot of interference, stimulation, helping out, good enough for me.